Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Ron Mars. You are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern Podcast. I am Phil, joining me as always, the master of the core, it is. I am Will, hey everyone. And this time we're back to talk War of the Green Lantern Part 3 uh, from... I ran them all here. Alright, it's from Green Lantern number 66, Green Lantern 416, Green Lantern Emerald Warriors number 10. Alright, so... All right, so, but <laughs> did you see that link I sent you uh, a few hours ago? Yes, I did. Um, I'm uh, so what, what Phil's talking about is the link uh, to the announcement about the true detective style Green Lantern show that's set to hit Max with Hal Jordan and John Stewart in the lead. Uh, I think the game games radar link was what it was, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess it wasn't official official before, but now I guess it's official like that, you know, HB mm-hmm. or Max has, you know, ordered that, you know, there's an order for the show now and officially, officially we're getting a show now. Yeah. I, you know, and, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful, but having having a uh, you know an, an older Hal Jordan with a younger rookie John Stewart, I think that can work. I just hope we're not uh, headed for a what was it? Beware my power uh, situation yeah, hope, here. <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, maybe so. by older, maybe he's like five years older, so, you know, something like, you know, mm-hmm. nothing like major, it, you know, it's not like he's his dad's age or something, you know, hopefully it's not like, yeah, hopefully, you know, doesn't have the gray temples and, you know, you know, parallax is coming or whatever. I don't know. I was going to say, <laughs> we know what that's a sign of, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm, like I said, I'm still trying to keep an open mind and I want this to be, I want to enjoy this. I want this to be good. I, but I want DC Cosmic, right? You know, investigating yes. stuff on Earth. You know, I'm sure it, it's work, and I, it, it can definitely work. It's just, you know, Green Lantern is not about the Earth. Green Lantern is about the DC Cosmos. You're the Guardians of the Galaxy, and all of these, you know, ginormous science fiction ideas, you know, thrown together. So yeah. I'm I'm definitely wanting it to be good and I'm certainly going to be watching it uh, and I hope it doesn't necessarily stay centered on earth for too long. I know it's kind of the linchpin according to that article it's kind of the linchpin of the story that they want to tell across all of the different movies and everything. So uh, it's just been a very long wait for, you know, awesome Live action Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I didn't see any pictures of any Green Lanterns, but did you see there they were starting to leak like behind the scenes uh pictures from the new Superman movie? Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that looks pretty good. Um I mean there was Mr. Terrific. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I you know, I don't know. Um when's it gonna come out? Is it coming out in twenty twenty five or twenty twenty six? I think it's twenty twenty five here on but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's next year. Uh, okay. Oh, and then uh, also, uh, yes, breaking news: uh, August 1st will be the begin the first episode of Batman: Cape Crusader, the new animated show. Batman, I, my favorite character. I've heard some good things about that. I've seen it popping up in my feed a little bit. Yes, and um, 
after my interview with Mr. JMD Mateus, my latest one, uh, Capes Lunatics episode 332, he said he wrote an episode for season two. So they're already working on season two of that show. So nice. Very yes. nice. Yeah, how did that go? I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend that. Oh, one. good, good. It was great. I mean, talked about all his Kickstarter stuff, you know, phase two's about to begin, uh, the the um campaign, talked to his uh Spider Man, uh Shadow of the Green Goblin miniseries. Uh yeah, he has a Batman miniseries coming up here, Batman Robin Lives. Yeah, and then he said he, you know, did Cape Crusader, he wrote an episode for that. Then we started talking. He has some novels which are um oh, cool. which he, he described as like twi- some of them like Twilight Zone esque, which he was describing him. It sounded pretty. It sounded pretty cool. Any any word on a collection of perhaps the Spectre, or you know, lots of uh, his work? <laughs> I didn't ask him, but I mean, he's always beating the drum of you know they need to reprint this stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's some there are some truly beautiful stories in that Spectre series that he did. But yeah, he's always working. I, that's why I said. That's why I told him. Every time it seems like I talk to him, he has at least three or four things going. Because mm-hmm. as I said, I'm like, can you shut your brain off? He's like, I think the way he's like, I think the longest I've gone like trying to take a break was like a week. <laughs> he just that says, makes sense. Yeah, stuff just. <laughs> All right, Superman. Uh, yeah, the new Superman movie's coming. Yes, next year, July 11th next year. So we're a little over a year out from uh, Superman. Yeah. Okay. And Green Lantern is sometime next year or 2026? Uh, uh, trying to remember. Did it say in the article? Yeah, I don't know if it mentioned. Because, again, didn't they have they retold at least once on this thing? Yeah, I mean, so, I think they have. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, 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 oh, the new series which ties in the James Gunn's burgeoning DC movie universe, Green Lanterns. Yeah, how Jordan and John Stewart will take the lead with actor Nathan Fillion's Guy Gardner also likely to appear after debuting in 2025 Superman. Oh, okay. So it sounds like it's kind of if it does after next year, it's going to be after mm-hmm. Superman. So in the later half of gotcha. next year, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, well, we might get Guy in there too. Where's Cal Rainer? <laughs> they may be saving him for the parallax story. <laughs> Maybe. I was going to say, I mean, come on. You want this thing to succeed. Come on. You need Cal Rainer in there. Come on. Okay. So I have a question for you. I think you know that when, when thinking about storylines for Green Lantern, if they never, ever, ever, never, ever, do another power battery blow up story again. <laughs> It'll be too soon. Yes. It'll still be too soon. However, would you be willing to accept, you know, a parallax power battery explosion type thing for the live action? Oh, maybe. I mean, well, well all right, let me turn that around on you. Would you be willing to accept, even if it's only temporary, a uh, Emerald Twilight storyline? With Hal Jordan in his uh, most infamous role, I you know I think so. I think if it's done really well, um, I, I think it would be fun. not like Beware My Power. That was that that <laughs> that burned so much story potential for I'm I'm not even sure what effect, but it it just did. Um, but for a to bring those stories to a wider audience, I think so, because those, I mean, they are defining stories for Green Lantern. Yes. Right? The, and I don't just mean Hal Jordan. I mean, Green Lantern as a, you know, as a concept, you know, with Guy and with John and Kyle and, you know, everybody. Um, so I think. Look at you growing up. Before you would have been like, no, no Emerald <laughs> Twilight, no matter what. <laughs> But, you know, it, again, it, you know, there's no Emerald Twilight coming for that animated universe, whatever that was, you know, that's mm. whatever that, that thing is. But, you know, just to have, because those, you know, Emerald Twilight, Rebirth, Sinestro Core War, you know, Blackest Night, those are core Ah, pardon the pain. Ah! 
those are really core stories for what Green Lantern has become since, you know, in the modern age, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what we all point to. And it, you know, to, to be able to take those stories and have them shared with a wider audience, I think would be really, really cool. And, you know, perhaps make a lot more Green Lantern fans because, you know, these are, these are the important stories, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now I do worry a little bit and, and it's not because again, I don't know anything. But I worry that Green Lantern could potentially be sidelined because, you know, he's not Batman, Superman, Wonder oh, Woman. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, that's this, especially those animated movies. It seems like they, mm -hmm. they, they focus, they only think Batman and Superman sell for the most mm -hmm. part on those things. So, you know, I have faith in Gunn, and yes. I think I think that this is going to be good. So, you know, but, uh, yeah, I think I would accept it. So what about you? You would, would you, uh, that would be a certain way to introduce, I don't know, a, a green lantern that you might kind of like, right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> who would that be, Phil? I don't remember who that is. I of course love Kyle Rayner. You can see his Funko, exactly. you can see his Funko over there. You can see that 3d printed mask over there and that ring uh -huh. set over there. <laughs> uh yeah so yeah oh and let's see i think i should get probably within the next week i should get uh, the latest issue of green lantern mm. which you said was good but i've not yes. uh, i've tried to avoid spoilers on it so far so uh oh yeah oh yeah that's um uh war journal came out last week i, I believe yeah that was last week oh. right was that issue 10 or 11 i think 10? it was i think it was 10 yeah okay Cool. All right. So should we get to uh, the War of the Green Lanterns? Yeah, I actually have a criticism of... We're, we're, acting, very... like, we're acting like this is brightest day. <laughs> nice. I actually have a criticism of a very specific plot point that we'll get into, I'm sure. Because <laughs> I think it did one of our guys dirty, but that's that's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. I know, I know. <laughs> When we get there, you can um, <clears throat> or rain your disapproval down on us. Yes. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. <laughs> all right. That's, all right. Let me do this smart here. Oh. Or the Green Lanterns hardcover. Nice. All right. Let me be all fancy here. All right. So, yes, we begin tonight with Green Lantern number 66. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh. Green Lantern number 66. All right, there's it on the app. From July 2011, uh, War of the Green Lanterns Part 7. Uh, writer Jeff Johns, penciler Doug Mank, uh, inkers Christian Alamy, Keith Champagne, Mark Irwin, and Tom Guyon. Colorist Randy Mayer, letterer Nick J. Napolitano, and editors Brian Cunningham and Darren Sean. Hal and Guy fight the entity-possessed Guardians. The Guardians slowly gain the advantage, forcing Guy to finally brandish the power gauntlet. However, Krona appears and unleashes a powerful blast that knocks Hal and Guy unconscious. Meanwhile, Sinestro remains trapped in the Book of the Black. In its pages, Sinestro is still the Green Lantern of Korrigar. He is attacked by a Manhunter, but Sinestro defeats it. Then the Sinestro remembers that he is no longer a Green Lantern. Enraged, Sinestro tears through the book's pages and sees the new Guardian's memory. Sinestro sees Saint Walker spending time with his family. Lar flees his childhood in Atrocitus attacking a Green Lantern. Finally, he gets to a page where he is trapped in a cage with Indigo One. Sinestro was attacked by Indigo One, who at that time was a violent and aggressive person. Indigo One claims that Albin Sir imprisoned her, but Sinestro does not care. He then escapes to another page. Then Sinestro arrives to a page where he meets Krona. He says that while Sinestro's heart is strong, his will is not. Krona then sets the page. Sinestro is on is on fire. 
Crona envelops Howling Guy in the same bandages he was wrapped in. He reveals his plan to the Earthmen. He wants them to become the new Guardians of the Universe. <laughs> uh, so. And if that doesn't prove that he's completely insane, nothing does, okay? <laughs> yes, I call her the Guardian of the Universe, okay. <laughs> or Hal as a Guardian of the Universe. <laughs> hmm. Boy, too bad we don't have an Earthman who is already a Guardian. <laughs> John Stewart, excuse uh -huh. me. <laughs> Uh, you know, this one was pretty good. Um, it's, I like how they played a little bit with the Guardians actually feeling something, you know, because they were possessed by the entities. Yes. You know? I thought that was, that was neat. And then uh, Krona just being, you know, Krona. So, because mm -hmm. <laughs> he is, um, he's got the crazy eyes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm. Uh... And then just Sinestro trapped in the book of the black. Yeah, <laughs> and this is some really cool foreshadowing, you know, about Sinestro being a Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. Since since with New Fifty Two, you know, there is a definite change in status quo for a lot of the Green Lantern stuff, you know. Yeah. And again, it can be foreshadowing without like calling it out because if people see Sinestro as a Green Lantern, it's like, oh, he used to be a Green Lantern. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just a memory. And I'm trying to remember, did we pay this off uh, about Indigo 1 being locked up and claiming Aubin Sir locked her up? I can't remember. I don't I don't know. I mean, we'll have to just kind of watch for that because, yeah. I mean, the Indigo tribe, at least up to now, there's really not much known about them, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know if that gets paid off later in, you know, the Jeff Johns run or not. You know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. That's just so funny. Yeah, got a howling guy in those uh, robes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, yeah, like you said, this is a good one, but... Uh... I think like last time, I mean, these move pretty quickly. They do, yeah. I mean, and they're using, you know, low panel per page. Yeah. Counts and and and... Three to, maybe three to four panels on those pages. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, and there's, I mean, it's still, there's, you know, there's a lot of text on the pages. So, you know, it's not just, you know, pretty pictures, but these do read fast. And I think they're meant to read fast because, you know, this is, things are accelerating, you know, toward the, the climax that we get, you know. Fairly soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? Should we move on to part two? Well, let's do part two, where our our guy was done dirty again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Green Lantern. Oh, hold on. Throw the cover up because this might this might be my favorite one this week. Uh, yeah, Green Lantern Core number six. Oh, oh. Uh, there we go. All right, Green Lantern Core number 60. Oh, yeah, this is a good cover. Yes, War of the Green Lanterns Part 8 uh, from July 2011. Writer Tony Bedard, penciler Tyler Kirkham, inker Matt Banning, colorist Rod Reyes and Nye Rapino, letterer Pat Russo, and editors Brian Cunningham and Darren Sean. John and Kyle arrive at MoGo and discover that MoGo is sending rings to potential Green Lantern candidates. Realizing that these candidates are will also be corrupted, John constructs a dome and encases all the rings. Then John and Kyle discover a cave that leads to Mogo's core. Suddenly, the rings escape from the dome construct. Kyle believes that his blue ring can heal Mogo, so the two travel to Mogo's core. Kyle uses his ring to construct an image of Paul, uh, uh, Vaz's, de Vaz's deceased lover. This frees her from the impurity, encouraging Kyle and John to continue. They arrive at Mogo's core, and Kyle generates an image of Buzzed, Mogo's former partner. Uh, suddenly, Kyle's ring detects a Black Lantern impurity. John realizes that the impurity was caused when Mogo absorbed the Black Lanterns to save Oa. Kyle tries to purify Mogo, but the Black Lantern energy is too strong. Suddenly, several lanterns attack them. John then hears Krona saying that the rings Mogo sent will create new lanterns that will conquer the universe. Enraged, oh boy, uh, 
I mean, Red Ring, uh, Enraged, John chat taps into the Black Lantern energy and takes Cal into space. John then constructs a sniper rifle and prepares to fire a bullet into Mogo's core. Realizing that this will kill Mogo, Cal tries to talk John down. However, John refuses and fires the bullet, killing Mogo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's like, if you wanted to do the whole, you know, he has to sacrifice by taking out a Green Lantern, that's one thing. But it's like, really, you have him doing another planet again? Yeah. I mean, and that was... So, Kyle's thing... Well, well I have two problems with... I mean, this was a good issue. It really was. Yeah. But I have two kind of plot things that, that kind of bother me on this. The first one being is, they free a Green Lantern. Mm hmm What happens? Does she just fly off and, you know, like go have a, a smoothie <laughs> somewhere or, you know, oh, does she, what, yeah. what we, we don't see her anymore. Okay. And then two, she, you know, so she could have helped. Right. But mm -hmm. two, it, Kyle's was the blue, you know, his blue light was working. Mm -hmm. John could tap into the blue light and help Kyle, but he goes immediately to just taking him out, right? Yep. That just, uh, that seemed really off to me. You know, he got shown the psychic connection to Mogo that all these rings are out there. And there's going to be you know, lots of death and destruction. But I, I didn't really buy that because as soon as they get a ring, they're coming back to Oa. They're not going out and kill, in a killing frenzy. I mean, they will mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. But they're coming back to Oa. So it, it's the, uh, well, okay, spoilers, Mogo's not dead. <laughs> I mean, he is, but he's not. He comes back during uh, New 52, and he's around in, you know, the the rebirth era mm -hmm. of the books, Green Lanterns and Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. But this just felt, I don't know, kind of, hey, here's something big happening for reasons that don't make a lot of sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean. And again, it just feels like we're hitting all the negative um, mm -hmm. highlights of John here. It's like, yeah, okay, he takes out a planet again. Oh, yeah, he saw his dead wife, yeah, the image of his dead wife, too. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, I mean, it. Zanchi. <laughs> so, and again, you know, there's, and, a, there's a problem when John John will do something, and got, even guys like, yeah, no, you shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, when guys well, with the reason. Yeah, and I I really like coming up, which we'll talk about in a second. That the person that you know does the important thing to get them to the next step is Guy, you know, instead yeah. of Hal. I mean, I think that was really good. I feel like Kyle and John don't, I mean, Kyle, yeah, Kyle and John don't get a lot of really, you know, we talked last time about, you know, they should have stayed because getting Parallax out of the battery would solve all their problems versus taking out Mogo, uh -huh. which solves just a tiny part of their problem. Yeah, <laughs> it had all gone to the battery. Yeah, yeah. Mogo could have been free. Although there's that whole thing. I mean, I kind of like it that they didn't just gloss over that from Blackest Night, where you know, because Mogo did absorb mm -hmm. all that Black Lantern. Mm -hmm. energy, but yeah. So I mean, this one. I wonder. I do you, Do you think this is a byproduct of? Uh, oh, hey, we have a r different writer on each book, so it's like when they were like, you know, plotting this out. They're like, okay, Tony, in your issue, you're gonna have to kill Mogo. And then leave it up to him to come up with the reason for, you know. Maybe, I, I don't know. It's It just seems contrived to me yeah. a little bit. I mean, the rest of the book is really good. You know, John and Kyle working yeah. together to get down there. Although I still think, and I, I think a, a very fair criticism of the Jeff Johns run is that Kyle gets ignored i think mm -hmm. fairly regularly but john gets ignored much much more uh you know during this era you know 
we we you know we can go all the way back to the beginning of the series of this series. Mm. John is is Hal's partner, but he goes undercover for like a year, and we don't see him in the book. You know, for like eighteen issues or or some something yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I wonder if that's a combination of, you know, writers have preferences for certain characters like Hal Jordan mm -hmm. and stuff. And two, it's like before Rebirth, I mean, that decade before Rebirth, it was all Kyle. We You had John in there, too. So it's like, maybe mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, yeah, these guys had these two had the spotlight for the last decade before this. So, uh, that, uh, yeah, still, I know. It's not a, if it, if it, it, even if that is the reason, it's still not a good reason. So, no, I mean, no. Trust me, I want more Kyle Rayner. So. Yeah. I mean, and I, I feel, I feel like, you know, Kyle, Kyle being in the core book is good because he kind of took over, you know, as the lead in that book after yeah. Blackest Night, right? Or yeah, like after Blackest Night or was it pre, no, pre Blackest Night because it was after Sinestro Core War because it was after the Ion series. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, John just seems kind of lost in all this. And I, I know this is a big moment that they're giving him at the end here, but again, it feels a little contrived to me. And I think part of this is like thing. The thing I don't like is when they make John like the soldier and stuff, which again, I mean, I guess in your modern Green Lantern Corps, you're kind of going to get it like a military vibe, but mm -hmm. yeah, they're really playing up. Oh, he's the Marine and stuff. Again, it's like, I liked when he was the architect, when he was like the cerebral one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think we get, back to a bit of that as him being more a strategist and things like especially in the green lantern war journal book right now yes you know we yeah. get that but also you know in uh and i haven't read these yet so you know later new 52 uh like green lantern uh, edge of oblivion and what's the other limited series at the time um uh there's another like six issue mini green lantern I have to look it up. I can't remember what it was, but there was another like, because that was between, I think, or after the core book had been canceled, but that before the end of new 52, they were like sent mm. to another universe or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So, you know, with John as the leader of the core, because mm -hmm. I think that we're going to find out based on, you know, the stories that are coming up that yeah, Hal is, a really, really good Green Lantern, potentially the best, but he's not a good leader of the Green Lanterns, which I think yeah. is an important yeah. distinction. And I think John is a much better leader because he is more cerebral, whereas, you know, mm -hmm. Hal will just do whatever, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what's hitting me here? Tell me what you think. It's, uh, I think, as again, they've improved the guy, guy Gardner's character since like the 90s and stuff. He's more, mm -hmm. more well rounded. It almost seems like maybe as they're as they're elevating guy, they're kind of pushing some of his more negative traits off on the John. Mm, I could potentially see that he's more um, abrasive, you know. And it's like yeah. he's the one who he's the one who'll take the kill shot and stuff. And it's like, yeah, wasn't that guy? Yeah, it, I think that's a good point. And you know, we talked about this last time. Is that hey, during New Fifty Two, they meet the new gods for the first time. Mm -hmm. What is how this is what about Zanchi, right? So, why is he the way he is when you take which I'm fine with him taking that away? Um, and I, you know, we've we've again talked about this a lot too. Kat Matui needs to come back, and we need to finally just get rid of and not worry about or even mention anymore Zanchi. It's, it's yeah. done, it's over, it's great, you know, whatever. I think part of that, is, part of the reason why I didn't like, you know, him destroying Mogo is because it just, it's meant to echo that and just amplify it, right? You know, he he just killed another planet, you know. And if I, I think we had Guy last week say, you know, yeah, you're going to send you to kill a planet. And he goes, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't think Guy said yeah. exactly that, but you know, so it's. I think that's really kind of the only only criticism I have of War of the Green Lanterns is is this these specific plot points right here, you know, mm -hmm. in this in this issue. Once that's done, you know, everything kind of plays out I think really well and you know, we get we get some interesting things that happen at the in you know, end of War of the Green Lanterns. But yeah. uh 
yeah, I feel like I feel like John Stewart was kind of done done dirty in this one. I don't know. Is it just I, I don't want to I don't want to think this way, but is it just his whole existence has John been what they needed him to be at the time? Like first he was the angry young man, and then you know he was more the the he, architect, yeah, and then he was yeah, the one that went he public was, with he, his he was, identity. Yeah, in the early nineties, he was kind of like the neutral middle ground between Hal and uh, Hal and Guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. It's so. So much was done with John by within the Green Lantern Mosaic title, right? Mm-hmm. That was ultimately totally ignored. I was going to say that's the, <laughs> that's the other thing. Once we once we dropped the whole oh yeah they evacuated everyone off of Mosaic. We never mentioned Mosaic again. No, we don't. I mean and. I mean, if I, if I might have mentioned it once or twice in the 90s, that's it. It's like, yeah, they never mentioned Mosaic. Yeah, and, you know, we get, uh, you have Kyle reforms OA, right? Mm-hmm. And the central power battery. What was that, 160s of his series? 150s? I can't remember when exactly it was. My, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no, was it at 150? He brought the plan. He brought OA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then later he brings back the, the Guardians. Guardians. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, you know, I think, I think the there's kind of a consistent attitude toward John as a Green Lantern yeah. and his character over the years, and that's he's overlooked and ignored most of the time. Mm-hmm. Now he wasn't in the last volume what was that volume seven six i can't i can't keep up with the numbers anymore the, the jeffrey thorn run yeah and i thought he got some good stuff happening uh with him you know we finally remembered that hey yeah, you be a guard dude <laughs> and we got some interesting developments but it was i really feel like it was at the expense of the of, of everything else at hmm. green lantern at that point you know we had another battery blow up again really <laughs> talk to energizer they'll make a better one for you okay Sorry. oh <laughs> <laughs> but you know the and again i know there's a lot of people that have really really strong opinions of the jeffrey thorn run I think that there was some really cool and interesting stuff in it, but there was a lot of stuff too that I didn't like uh, that I thought was ultimately, you know, not great for Green Lantern as a whole. Whereas I think it did some really good things for John, you know, making him an ascended being, making him he has been that we just, you know, ignored, you know, because he, he was a guardian. And then he suddenly wasn't. He woke up without his ring. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I'm in a dark star. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. cool so, cool. okay. Not the, I mean, not to hop on the John thing too long, but do you think out of all the gre- all the Earth Lanterns, I mean, there are four cores, man, even the ones that come later, like Simon, Jessica, you know. Uh, do Joe. You th- Joe, do you think uh, John is the most inconsistently portrayed? Well, I think that's a I think that's a really fair point because I mean Guy has been fairly consistent, although amplified to cartoonish uh lengths during, you know, his original series, yeah. his Guy Gardner series, right? Um Hal has been fairly consistent and then whatever inconsistencies he's had has been explained away by you know, Jeff Johns with three birth and all that stuff, right? The but John John is you know, he's nearly been around, you know, what, twenty years less than than maybe than Hal and a couple of years less than, than Guy. So yeah, he probably has been really inconsistently uh portrayed and you know 
I think part of what we're seeing here is, you know, when we look back at John Stewart from a comic standpoint, he was never a Marine. Mm. He was a, he was an architect. He's always been an architect. And I think part of that success of the justice league cartoon grafted that, you know, military background onto him. And I don't know. And I think they sometimes fight, you know, you know, the classic John Stewart versus, you know, new, new John Stewart, whatever you want to, you know, call him. Um, but, uh, you know, I think one of the really good things about the Green Lantern War Journal title is it's trying to, you know, mesh those back together, you yeah. know, so that he's not just the the Marine. He's not just the architect. He's because at this point, you know, anybody that's encountered John Stewart is going to know him as both, you know, mm-hmm. just because, you know, that's, that's where, that's how he's been portrayed for, you know, 20 years at this point. Right. Mm-hmm. If not more, what was the Marine? I know that he was added as a Marine in rebirth, but did he have a background as a Marine during Kyle's run during the latter part of it? I don't remember them. I mean, unless they, it was like a quick reference somewhere, like uh-huh. a drop, but yeah, for the most part, I don't think so. No. Yeah. I think that, like you said, I think that was a rebirth thing. A rebirth <laughs> ad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. And, and they probably did that because of the justice league animated show. Cause I, that, I think he was a yeah. brain that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would, I would say that that's a fair point that he's probably been one of the most inconsistently portrayed of oh, yeah. four corpsmen. Right. Yeah. Well, and, which is funny because Kyle has been around for 30 years at this point. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, and again, this is me being, you know, I of course love Hal Jordan. I think he's been really consistent, you know, mm-hmm. probably the most consistent of any of the four over the last 30 years in the way he's been portrayed. I mean, and I, I think that's, and I think we owe that in large part to, Ron Mars and Daryl Banks being there for so long during, you know, from his first appearance until, you know, nearly, you know, eight years, seven, eight years in, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, in two, it's like during the, the, during most of Kyle's run, he was like the only green lantern too. So he had time to shine, you know, mm-hmm. any, you know, anytime John Stewart's been in green lantern, it's like, Oh, well, here's how Jordan off in the corner. He, even though yeah. you know, waiting to come back yeah. fired yeah it's like hey he's coming yeah there he is there he is yeah he's getting that ring back yeah 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 yep so yeah that so this again this is really kind of my only criticism of war of mm-hmm. the green lanterns although uh, corona is just bug eating nuts i mean he's just crazy at this point <laughs> I mean, and we see that in multiple ways, I think, during these three issues. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they never come out and say it, but I would love a story to just be like, yeah, you know what? You know part of the reason he's insane? Because he's been transformed by how many different crises? Because, again, it was like first it, it, oh, yeah. he originally brought mm-hmm. evil, evil into the universe. Then he created the mul- accidentally created the multiverse. Oh, and Oops. That, yeah. that got changed by <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah. And then he was entropy during what the third law or yeah. whatever that crossover was yeah. pre Emerald Twilight. Yeah. So it's just be like he's of... old and it's like, yeah, how many times has reality folded in on him, you know, and changed yeah. him? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So should we get to the last one? You bet. All right, let's see the ramifications of what John did. All right. Oh. Uh, cover uh, for Green Lantern Emerald Warriors number 10. All right. Uh... All right. Green Lantern Emerald Warriors number 10 from July 2011. War of the Green Lanterns part 9. Uh, writer Peter Tomasi, penciler Fernando Passarin. Oh, Lord. Ginkers, Cam Smith, Keith Champagne. Andy Owens, Sean Parsons, Jack Purcell, and Jay Liston. That's right. Six inkers, kids. 
Got to keep the trains running on time, man. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, what was it? Was it the Green Lantern issue or the core issue? There was four anchors on that. So, yeah, I think they mm. were really, yeah. Uh, colors, Gabe Edelab, anchor Rob Lee, and editors Brian Cunningham and Darren Sean. <clears throat> As Krona continues his play in the Transform Howling Guy and the Guardians, pieces of Mogo fall across Oa. In space, Kyle berates John for killing Mogo. He then attempts to restart Mogo's core, but fails. John teleports them to Oa to help Hal and Guy. Mogo's destruction weakens Krona's mind and dissolves his constructs, allowing Hal and Guy to break free from their chains. Hal and Guy take Krona and the Book of the Black and escape, but not before Guy punches Krona in the face. <laughs> As they fly across Oa, Hal and, Hal and Guy realize that the debris came from Mogo. Suddenly, John and Kyle appear in front of them. John admits that he killed Mogo. Hal tells John to teleport them to the central power battery, saying that they have a chance to remove Parallax and save the core. <clears throat> Hal, Guy, John, and Kyle unite their powers and unleash a powerful blast to the battery, but the battery is unaffected. Ganthet recovers and tells the Earthmen that to break through the battery, they must tap into the power of all the lights of the emotional spectrum. Ganthet gives the Star Sapphire Ring the Guy and the Agent Orange Ring the Hal. Before they use their powers again, the Earthmen and Ganthet are attacked by the brainwashed lanterns. As Hal, as Hal, Cal, and John fight the lanterns, Ganthet tells Guy that he is the only one who can remove Parallax from the battery since he wields the two extreme lights of the emotional spectrum. He focuses on the things he both loves and hates and removes Parallax from the battery. The core is freed and Ganthet leads the lanterns in the containing Parallax. Hal, John, and Kyle remove their rings, but Guy claims he can't take the green ring, the red ring off because it will kill him. However, Kyle uses his blue light to purify Guy and destroy the red ring. The Earthmen then wield the green lantern rings and rejoin the lantern core. Suddenly, Krona and the entity-possessed guardians appear, and the battle begins. <laughs> nice. <Maybe> next week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, and this is in contrast to the last issue with John's kind of spotlight. Guy gets the spotlight here and, you know, does something pretty awesome, you know, mm -hmm. using, uh, although he didn't want to, you know, Violet Ring. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he ends up freeing Parallax, which is, you know, the plan all along, which, you know, we're not going to talk about the, the needless murder of, you know, Mogo, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, but yeah, I thought this was a really good issue and, you know, showcased, you know, Kyle is still, you know, very annoyed because of what John did. Mm -hmm. I think Hal and Guy probably are too, but, you know, they're like, look, we'll hash this out later. <laughs> we got, we got, we got crap to do right now. Right. <laughs> Although if you, if you had listened though, as I went on to the central battery first, hmm. exactly, this wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> but yeah, the, and this one reads fast too because we were, you know, the accelerators down, and we are heading to the end of this. I think we've got what two issues left, plus the two issues of the aftermath. No, I think I think it's, I think it's just one issue, and then the two aftermath okay. issues. So yeah, so it's yeah, pedal is down. Oh yeah, definitely. Guy calls Ganthet Blueberry. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some really cool... Uh, let's see, part nine. You know, we've got... And this one actually, you know, there's lots... To go so fast, it still has lots of, uh, you know, pages that have quite a few panels, although it has, you know, this kind of double page splash ish thing with the the four earth lanterns you know and three panels above it so mm -hmm. uh, and then it then it kind of starts backing out and you know having fewer pages or fewer panels per page you know as the as it goes through here but then we get that wonderful splash with uh you know kilowog hal john guy arisia kyle you know, just everybody oh yeah, the last page there yeah yeah that is a that is a really nice page oh yeah <laughs> and of course guys you know let's have the ass kick and start right here <laughs> <laughs> but yeah
but yeah, this is this is a really good issue. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I mean, this was. I mean, this was a decent. Uh, event. I mean, yeah, we have one more part, but yeah, I mean, this was a decent event. I mean, it's better than mm-hmm. brightest day, like we said. But again, it's a very low bar. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, it's, it's a Green Lantern centric event. No one else is involved, so yeah, and it's very focused too. Yes, I mean, you know, even though it's going across three books. The it's focus only, is it's really like 10 issues and two aftermath issues. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's not, you know, 24 issues and a couple of miniseries after it to explain what happened. <laughs> and then again, all of those plot yeah. points get dropped. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. But once again, it's like, yeah, bravo to the creative teams, you know, because there are three different writers on this. So. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it all reads really evenly. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's good, except for, you know, something that we disagree with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I don't know. I mean, again, it's just we call out the inconsistency we see. And, you know, every, I guess different writers have different interpretations of John. It's just. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that I think you and I are both tired of Zanchi. <laughs> you know, just so tired. I know we we should we should have kept count from from episode one or at least from the road back we should have kept count. Yeah, exactly, Zanchi, 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 Zanchi. <laughs> but uh, you know, and we've been saying it for a long time. You know, we, Kat Matui should be back mm-hmm. as a lantern just because you know it was such a poorly done death. Yeah, and. Everything, everything else from that run of Green Lantern in Action Comics Weekly, I said the, I said the thing that we don't talk about, I know, I know, has been completely ignored. And I'm okay with that. Let's just ignore Katma's death, too. She's back, and hey, everything's good. <laughs> I mean, you could. I mean, you could redeem everything in Action Comics Weekly. I mean, you know, you could reveal Oh Katma's alive and she's a prisoner of Malvolio. Uh, oh, on the orders of Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's totally going to happen now. You know that, right? I know. <laughs> this is, you're right. This has been a really good event. And I think that's, you know, due to really the focus. But also, you know, it's just been really well executed. You know, Krona... You know, we may have had problems with the lead up to this, with that New Guardians arc, which really felt like it was treading water for a while. But to be fair to it, it did slowly, slowly <laughs> set up Krona and the entities and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Such that, you know, we were able to get this focused event because the work was done, you know, back then. Well, we'd had Brightest Day, you know, dragging it down, too. That's true, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, this is this is really good, and I'm I'm eager to read the last part plus the aftermath because I don't really remember. I mean, I remember what happens to Hal, but you know, just to, to you know to read it again and and really you know get a sense of what's going on, and then you know read those two aftermath issues mm-hmm. because once we do that, we've got a couple of issues of the core. I think. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll pull up the schedule. But yeah, I mean, we'll. I mean, yeah. Last next week's the last part of uh, War, and then I. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh one emerald. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I think we only have three more episodes before uh, Flashpoint. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, come on, schedule. Because I know 60, 67 is the final issue of this volume of Green Lantern. And that's the yeah that's I think that's next week that's the last part of uh yeah yeah mm-hmm. more the green yeah because next week is yeah sixty seven and then the two aftermath issues and then we got a three issue uh core arc and then a three issue emerald warriors and then yeah it's flashpoint wow so we yeah we only got three more episodes for flashpoint very cool. very cool. Mm-hmm. then you know what that means it's Uh, 
All right. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> uh, no, I think that's it, sir. It's a good, good week. It was a good week. That's at Walt Red. Uh, all right. So, yes. <laughs> All right, so yes, so uh, yes, next week we will wrap up the Green Lantern Corps stuff. Uh, well, the, well, the War of the Green Lanterns with uh, Green Lantern sixty seven, and like I said, uh, War of the Green Lanterns aftermath one and two. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, then we get to uh, Green Lantern Corps sixty one through sixty three, and then Green Lantern Emerald Warriors eleven through thirteen before we get to the Flash two Flashpoint miniseries. So. Send us your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember to find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Get your brand new Capes and Lunatics merch with all the new logos. Uh, again, there's a uh, Cash App link and it demands you rain ran the money on us through the Cash App link. Make it rain. Again, uh, yes, uh, treat us like that young naive girl dancing her way through school or whatever uh yeah it's just ran the random money on us she looks like she was just working a f***ing <laughs> stripper pole down at divas and of course <laughs> the, the patreon where again you're gonna get uh something different every month uh look for june Lilf and i did uh we talked about most, if not all, of the uh, major uh marvel dc character lgbtqia characters from marvel and dc so and uh <clears throat> when we think uh maybe hiding in the closet <coughs> dr doom all right so <laughs> so find it all at uh tube space.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network that's tube space.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network and yes patreon.com slash capes and lunatics all right now for this will all red master of the green lantern core master of the quantum zone Master of podcasting and master of several successful Kickstarter pro uh, campaigns. Uh, uh oh. All right. So before you get to that, Will, can I close your window? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had I had it open. There you go. All right. Uh, so, Will, tell everyone where they can find you and your projects and everything else. Cool. Nice. Um, uh, you can find me at Walred. That's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D at Gmail and Facebook and Blue Sky and Twitter and probably Instagram and maybe a few others that I've forgotten at this point. But if you'd like to check out uh, the comics that I write, you can do that at uh, for Crossover Division. You can do that at CrossoverDivision.com. And for Diary of Night, you can do that at DiaryofNight.com. Crossover Division 5, uh, we were hoping it was going to go to the printer last week, but it hopefully it'll go this week. Uh, we just got a couple more edits to do on it, and then it will get printed and sent out to all the backers. So looking forward to doing that. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun uh, mailing out these packages and seeing names that have, I see, you know, from campaign number four or number three or number two and just seeing all these returning backers. So it's, it's really kind of cool. I actually really enjoy that part of the campaign is, you know, getting the books out into people's hands. But uh, mm -hmm. you can, again, you can check that out at crossoverdivision.com or diaryofnight.com. And finally, uh, you're hanging out here with Phil and I. Listen to us talk about Green Lantern, which means one thing and one thing only. Probably means that you love Marvel's Quasar almost as much as we do. And if you'd like to learn more about Quasar, you can do that at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. Seems like I'm getting a package every other day. <laughs> I'll put it in my navel. Five inches, maybe. <laughs> hey, boys, you look at the party? I love the party. I hope it's going somewhere nice. They aren't even attempting to enter our orifices. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> I, of course, love our Jordan. I do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, we know. Five minutes. All right, kids. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. Come back next week for the conclusion of War of the Green Lanterns from Green Lantern 67 and War of the Green Lanterns Aftermath 1 and 2. And then Green Lantern 4, 61 through 63. Green Lantern uh, Emerald Warriors 1 through 13. And then we're on to the two Flashpoint miniseries. Here comes Dr. Flashpoint. 
I can't remember. I, something I, I don't remember. Me too. The softest of <laughs> the Green Lantern. I think you meant the most haphazard of reboots. Whatever. <laughs> oh, that was so haphazard. <laughs> All right, kids, come back next time and remember. Get your umbrellas out. It's raining, Mogo. Good night. <laughs> oh.